Krishna Kopolis, could you please de- uh, could you please uh, describe for us your work uh, with ALC, with um, Access Livelihood India, on how nutrition uh, and livelihoods can be approved through enterprise developments? Where did you already see impact in your work? Over to you, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, and uh, I would like to start with a statement saying that enterprises, businesses, and markets have a responsibility to focus on improving purchasing power and productive capacities of women farmers at the bottom of pyramid. And those enterprises which takes this seriously will have transformative impact on women and their households because it will generate additional income improves employability opportunities and ensures better quality of life. Uh, Creo, the brand that we are trying to promote, is an aspiration of 1 million rural and tribal women farmers in India from rain-fed areas to establish a brand which will reimagine food systems to be more equitable and sustainable. Creo will enable these women farmers to directly link with the conscious urban consumers within 100 kilometers under a new supply chain configuration, which we are calling as producer to consumer, much like B2B and B2C, we are calling this as producer to consumer and with technology uh, developing, it's quite possible that the future food systems will have producers directly connecting to the consumers. And therefore this model is to create a new configuration of supply chain, which is producers are directly linked to the consumers through a fully digitally enabled and traceable system. For the conscious consumers in, in, in India, This is a significant development because rural women will then be able to offer affordable, authentic and spirited choices for their food. And the key elements which are enabling this to happen is, first, we are allowing adoption of 13 agroecological principles as the basis for production technology in agriculture with the farmers. Now, this is a behavioral change in the production practice, which is the key central, and that Uh, is accomplished through uh, digital tracking that we are trying to create. Second, we are enabling financial inclusion through digital platforms for women farmers. And India, we know, is ahead in adopting the digital payment systems uh, across the world. And therefore, this enables us now to reach out to women farmers with uh, a platform, digital platform for financial inclusion. The third is establishing agro-processing parks with a state of art for value addition units owned by the woman. And key, key here is to create value addition units which are completely owned by women and managed by the woman. Uh, the fourth is developing a modern contemporary brand, which is Creo, uh, through reliable marketing network, offering comfort, convenience, and nurturing the value which consumer conscious consumers are looking for. Now, this is a known uh, you know, recipe for a solution. But I would say that this also means there has to be significant investments into uh, transformation of food systems where today the world is still not ready. We need to have look for blended finance solutions where grants, equity, debt resources combine. And part of our efforts is to combine these uh, and create blended financial products and solutions. Second is to offer barrier-free access to higher education. Uh, India's women, most of them are uh, school dropouts. They do not have access to uh, you know, uh, high quality higher education. And therefore we have created something called as mini agroecological based business administration course, which is a nine month course with significant investments, helping the woman to understand the entire complexity of interrelationships between uh, you know, livelihoods, food nutrition, and uh, you know, employment and enterprise growth. The third is nurturance of social capital, and that we are trying to do by developing producer companies. Uh, These are cooperative companies which are developed at the grassroots, owned by the women and managed by the women. The fourth is uh, developing decentralized production of agro inputs, and which is very critical, and these has to be done from the natural ingredients and natural material. Uh, And here a substantial amount of innovation is required. How do we actually decentralize and produce uh, this one? Uh, agro inputs which are more convenient to the farmers. Fifth is creating a market level incentive, which is the most critical. Most often we don't emphasize on this, but unless you create a market incentive, you cannot create an entire transformation of food systems where innovative marketing channels with both physical as well as online markets being explored fully 
as uh, overall digital uh, digitization is enabling uh, market digitalization also. And the sixth, of course, is the key, which is the product innovation to offer ready to eat and ready to cook options because convenience is one of the major consideration within the consumer behavior uh, within India as it goes and uh, to create these product options. So these are the six, six uh, significant ways in which we're trying to reimagine. Finally, just to narrate the, what is the kind of impact it will generate? So when we invested into a dairy value chain and uh, through which we, uh, through a, a producer company, which is owned by the woman, 20,000 women, in fact, precisely, what it meant was tripling income. And obviously once the income, increased income flows into women, uh, women's hand in India in general, they consciously use that for uh, expenditure to be uh, improve the diet quality as well as to invest on the education for children. So this has happened in one of our uh, cases. In other cases where we have invested on developing an indigenous breed, uh, semi-intensive back at poultry model with tribal women, they, we have experienced doubling of income, but obviously this has immediately has improved the high quality poultry meat being accessible at the household level for the uh, tribal women. And finally, in the last two years, when we have started looking at behavioral change practice for uh, agroecological practices to be adopted, we have found that the first significant impact is that people have started retaining this food, which is much more healthier compared to those which are produced through uh, industrial, conventional industrial agriculture practices for their own consumption. And this has been established in almost 100% of the cases where they've started using this produce first in their own household before they sell it to the market. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, this has really been a very huge and comprehensive example you've given, looking at producer and processing side, uh, looking at the context of the producers and the livelihoods and why they are, they are in a certain uh, situation, but then looking at the processing, uh, looking at the, the, the needs and the wishes of consumers with regard to convenience and comfort, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this is really a powerful example that we should take at heart. Mm -hmm.